This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. Welcome to Strangers No More, where all people are loved with the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the household of faith, there are to be no strangers, no foreigners, no rich and poor, no outside others. As fellow, fellow citizens with the saints, we are invited to change the world for the better from the inside out, one person, one family, one neighborhood at a time. Thank you, Andrew. Hi, I'm Maggie Slight. Welcome to Strangers No More. Today, we are talking about the lesson, All Flesh is in Mine Hand. And this was an interesting one to read. <laughs> But first, let's go around our little Zoom table and share some things that we've learned or relearned. And and Bradley, you just have the uh, uh, interesting <laughs> smile on he your does, face. I'm gonna does. pick on you for. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. You have a I'm glow. Just must be happy today. <laughs> I guess I didn't have work today, so that was great. <laughs> How, how has your work been? I mean, you just like started this new job and go. Yeah, work has been very interesting. I have learned a ton. I do feel bad sometimes because I feel like I'm torturing people. I know. Um, because what I do is I um, coach people through exposures in regards to their OCD and anxiety. So I'm trying to help them do things that they fear. And it's often very emotional. So... <laughs> A little As tricky, but I enjoy it. severe OCD, I can only imagine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very difficult. So, and that's that's my job is to coach people through it. So, and I have to be uh, very calm and content and, and all that so that they don't freak out even more. Bradley, are you like in like a celebrity van, like celebrities travel in because it looks like- No. Okay. <laughs> this, just, this is- I, yeah, just upstairs. Okay, because I see wardrobe and I didn't know that's how like when you would travel, like when Madonna would travel, you would have. No, my mom has a store. So this is actually the boutique that I'm in. Okay, okay. That's, that's cool. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I did get a new calling finally. Oh, oh cool. Yes. What is it? Yes. Sunday school first counselor. Yes. Oh, nice. We talked there about that. Go. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh. That's all right. We did talk about that. Did we talk about it on the show or? I don't yeah. Know. I just yeah, we did. It, it was two weeks ago. ago. A few weeks ago. On the 15th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so far, I haven't done too much in regards to that, but I'm Very excited. Interesting so, yeah. calling with the Sunday school. So, no, we're I all there's, there's three of us on here that are first counselors. So, you're first counselor in Sunday school. Andrew and I are first counselor in the Eldest Quorum Presidency, overseeing missionaries. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I think that's all that I had. Thank you, Bradley. Sorry, I had to I had to clear my throat at the dogs. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Dennis, how about you? What do you well, learn? So, so today was Memorial Day and I was able to go, actually I'm missing out on a bonfire right now with s'mores, but that's okay. <laughs> So, but I had a blast. I went zip lining and my oldest quorum president as his first counselor, his wife felt compelled a week ago to give me a bracelet. And she says, I hope you don't find this to be tacky and I don't at all. It's a bracelet that is leather and it has, um, it has, it says Dennis, Steve, Courtney, Braden, Tyler, and Jessica. And she wanted me to know that I'm a part of their family. And so oh, nice. every time I put this on, I'm like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I guess that, that, so today, you know, we had an, an awesome opportunity. There was about 40 people. And this is the first time we've seen each other like without mask because Connecticut has different mandates. And as long as you're vaccinated, you can. And there was a lot of non-members. I texted her and I said, do you mind if I invite a Catholic friend? And she goes, why not? I'm going to have an Episcopalian. There's going to be some Jews there. There's going to be some atheists. And I replied back and said, but what other religions can we, can we get? 
and come to find out we had a lot. 50% of the people there, 20 out of the 20 were non-members. And I'm going to go into that a little bit later. Wow. Because it was a Thank great you. opportunity. Great. <laughs> Which is Thank why you. I was running late for the recording for this show. Because I was sharing his gospel. Thank you, Dennis. Andrew, how about you? Oh, I've learned. What have I learned? Um, I, I, I don't know what I've learned. I don't know if I've learned anything this week. <laughs> um, what did I learn? I learned that uh, it's nice to be off work for a week before I start my new job. Uh, um, yeah, I, I am very, uh, that's, I don't really have much to say. <laughs> uh, okay, well, thank you. And I'm, I'm excited for your new job. So <laughs> I mean, Actually, with you and Bradley both starting new jobs and Maggie, Dennis, yes. Can I give a shout out to North Star happening? the first yes. in, in um absolutely so i'll be traveling to utah in I, I leave on the 9th and north star is that weekend and i'll be speaking on friday and saturday at north star and i'm super excited about all the people if you want to go to northstar.org or just google northstar.lds because why don't you tell us what north star is okay so north star is an organization that i originally did not include in the back of my book because i thought it was about conversion therapy I did not realize that they are in line because when I filled out the application last year to speak in May and March, just before COVID hit, um, I did not realize that Becky McIntosh is on the board and they ask you to be a full temple recommend holder if you're gonna speak because they're in line with the teachings of the church. And if you choose not to follow the teachings of the church, please gracefully not fill out this application. So it's an organization that helps um, teach leaders about how to manage or how to um, deal or how to minister to LGBTQIA individuals. And it's free for people to go to that are bishoprics, stake presidents, they have a leadership day, they have leadership training, and it's just phenomenal. I was blown away. Again, never judge a book by its cover. I met so many other members like Bradley and myself that are gay and that were there. And, and I just love meeting and connecting with these people and especially the youth. Thank you, Dennis. I am going to address an elephant in the room that I see saw across Bradley's face. Are you talking you to me? I'm the elephant no. in the room. Oh, sorry. No, I am talking to Bradley because Dennis <laughs> said a word that as he said the word, I saw the expression on Bradley's face and I want to give Bradley the air. Yeah, um, yeah, because I actually have attended North Star twice. Um, I do really enjoy it and I would like to attend it more. I just can't afford going every time. Um, I was also going to ask how, if anyone can apply to be on those panels, because I would love to do that. Oh, holler, wait a minute, can I, I, I don't want to mm -hmm. stop you from talking, but they have scholarship programs and um, Becky McIntosh and I just did an IG, IG live that is on my IGTV feed that explains how to minister to LGBTQ members and, and loved ones. And they don't even break even by having this registration fee because they get they will not turn anybody away. So Bradley, if you show up, they will get you in. You don't have to pay or register. But they, that's just to cover the meals and the rental of the Sheridan. So it's in the it's yeah, it's in downtown Salt Lake at the Sheridan. They don't pay us to speak, they don't pay keynote speakers, they don't pay the board members, but they don't even break even. They take money out of their pockets to make sure everybody has a place there. So you are welcome to be on the committee and you are welcome to, to go and they will never turn you away. And they'll do um, yeah, I have you. done the scholarships both yeah. times. Um, my, for this year, I work on the Friday, so I don't know how much I would even be able to attend. Um, Cause I think it's Thursday, Friday and Saturday, right? Yeah, but Saturday's yeah. my big talk. So you gotta be there Saturday. So well, yeah, maybe I'll come. This to makes Saturday, me wish but, I could come. Um, because yeah, I've next, gone the last two next years. Next year, I want to be there. <laughs> um, I do really enjoy it. Um, 
but there's I have two concerns, one of which Maggie has pointed out. Um, the <laughs> other is I do feel like a lot of times it pushes mixed orientation marriages, which I have a hard time with. Um, because a lot of times those are the only ones that are allowed to speak on the panels, at least that I've been aware of. There hasn't been a lot of people that are not on those panels um, that aren't in a mixed orientation marriage. I mean, obviously, Dennis, I've seen you there. And so you're an example of that. But so I have a hard time with that because I really don't like mixed orientation marriages. And then the other one is what you mentioned about being a temple recommend holder in order to even apply to be on the panel. That is kind of frustrating to me because it feels like it's a gatekeeping way of, oh, we want to minister to these individuals. And yet we're only ministering to those that fit a certain, certain standard. So, so uh, can I answer those two, those two questions? And I'm not answering for North Star because I'm not on their board, if you may. Mm -hmm. but, um, but it's just, it, what it's saying is that they don't want anyone to come and do anti-rhetoric or to complain or to say, oh, I've been excommunicated or I lost this and woe is me. And they are not aligned with the church. However, they do follow the church standings. Now, I agree with you about the same sex or, or mixed orientation marriage. That is not for me. I have been proposed to many times and they've done it. <laughs> Okay. Maggie, let's, it. let's wrap this one. Okay. Let's I'm going to, I'm going to wrap this up right I'm gonna here. I'm going to wrap because, this up because, because, because I'm, okay. I'm going to say that after you get back from North star, we can continue this discussion in a special episode. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Love that. That would be great. Love it. So let's start this lesson. <laughs> All flesh is in my hand. Doctrine and covenants 60 to 62. Well, this is an interesting, uh, uh, lesson because it it t deals with three different in groups that are traveling in some way sometimes it's hey they're coming from and they're just arriving in jackson county and some of them are a group of elders that are are traveling by canoe and on the waters and and um so this is it and it's interesting when you leave the comforts of what you know when it comes to like jackson county or where you're home Sometimes it can get a little scary. I, I always think of the musical Into the Woods. One of my favorite things about Into the Woods is, is the only way to actually for any of the characters in that musical to get to, to progress is to leave the comfort of their home and to go out into the scary woods. And that's what I'll, that's what we're talking about here. And what we're talking about in this is 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 much of that is that the Lord is there with you and, and, and it's there to support and take care of you. And, and much of this lesson is about that. And in fact, that's kind of what um, Elder Rasband says at, uh, at the beginning of the lesson, when he says, each of us must first strengthen ourselves spiritually, then strengthen those around us, ponder the scriptures regularly and remember the thoughts and feelings you experience as you read them. Then when you leave to go out into the world, whether you're traveling or serving a mission or, moving to Bountiful to start a new job or, or whatever, you know, the, the Lord, you'll have that basic for it and you'll be, the Lord will be there for you. Thank you, Andrew. I like that. You got a lot. Bradley, do you want to share what you got from this lesson? Yeah. Um, there is kind of just one main thought that I had going through this and let me see if I can pull it up real quick. My notes are kind of all over the place. Where's your mom's boutique? Uh, it's in Pleasant Grove. Okay. It's just in I'll, our house. <laughs> I'll have to come and say hello. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. I really like... Uh, Hold on, now I'm trying to find the verse. It's the one uh, talking about in section 62, the Lord wants me to make decisions as seemeth me good. Mm. Um, I don't know what verse that's in. I can't find it now. <laughs> um, eight. Of 62? Yeah. 62, eight. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I just really like that sentiment of 
um, there's kind of this balance between um, doing what God wants me to do and what I want to do and um, they can work together. And the goal is to make those aligned to where I'm not rebelling against God and God's not asking me to do anything that I'm not comfortable doing. So, and God's not going to change, obviously. So I'm the one that needs to work on things when that happens. Um, but I do have a testimony of that, that as we learn to kind of grow closer to God, we can align our will with God and, it, and the things that God wants us to do will also be the things that I want to do. So that's, that's kind of the thing that the main message that I got from this. I like that. Dennis, how about you? Well, to go back, what I was going to embellish on later, earlier, what I said, um, in Doctrine and Covenants, this one, there's a section that the, the Lord is pleased when I open my mouth. And today at the, the Memorial Day barbecue, I was noticing that we had the non-members and we had the members. And we, they were all congregating like in this huge four acre yard with the zip line. And, and so I said in the kitchen, I said to my friend Ashley, her husband's the first counselor to the bishopric. And I said, would you go get those elders and tell them to stop playing volleyball and come in this kitchen because I'm talking to eight non-members. And they, they, were, they were there like that. And I just was like, elders, you know, great to see you. And we started talking. And then afterwards, they were sitting down on the patio, uh, the non-members. And I said to the members, I said, look, we need you to be better ministering. And I opened my mouth and I was really adamant. Like, we need to mingle with these people as they're us. Because that is what a member missionary does. And I was just like, and everybody just looked at me and some said, yeah, I get that. And I said, well, getting it in action are two different things. We're doing action. Oh. <laughs> so I made everybody become one. And the elders sat and we talked and I was with my, my president and he said, um, I just felt compelled to bear my testimony to these people about these non-members about how he received revelation to call me to be his first counselor. And I explained the process. And I noticed that the members were using terms like MTC. And I would say that stands for Missionary Training Center. Because as you and I, Maggie, are converts, and they were talking in all these different languages. Mormon speak. Mormon speak. <laughs> yep. Mormonism. And we were like, or Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints-isms. And I just was like, all right, we need to become one. We are all loving children of God and Heavenly Father. We need to lead by example. So when it said in this, the Lord is pleased when I open my mouth, I am, what is it, Helen Reddy says, I am woman, hear me roar. I was like, <laughs> I am... <laughs> I am sharing this gospel. Hear me roar. And that was just an amazing, amazing blessing. When I read, um, open your mouth that, you know, that God is pleased when we open our mouth. It, it reminds me very much of Elder Dorf's re recent talk where he is called sharing what's in your heart. Um, and uh, he says, as followers of Jesus Christ, we have the privilege to share the love of our heavenly father, ha that our heavenly father has for all of us. His children, this may seem like a large or intimidating task, but it's actually quite simple. Share what is in your heart. Extend invitations in normal and natural way. Stay with the following principles. Love God, love your neighbor, and believe, love, and do. Share with people why Jesus Christ and his church are important to you. And I think that's, a, that's an important principle. I think so much, like yesterday, I act the fifth Sunday of, of our, our, our church, and as the ward mission leader, I got to give a full to push to our ward about missionary work. And I started off service, talking of not missionary work service. Well, it's still work. Um, I, anyway, yeah, I think of it anyway, as service, but um, I, I share, I, I was able to share um, about missionary work. And what we talked about is that what you think of missionary work is not necessarily missionary work. It is, but it's not the, it, there's a much 
broader and expanded view of what, what missionary work is. And if you go to the sharing the gospel website, we, you know, I said, did you know that you can do missionary work by praying to ask our heavenly father to get to, to, sh- to give you more love for your neighbors? Did you know that just by sharing the things that happen to you in a normal, natural way and telling people about them at church that here's what happened at church, or here's my love of the gospel, or here we did this thing at Christmas time and we did this, whatever it is that's part of your life that is, you know, gospel centric, but anything, and you share that with it, that is also doing missionary work, right? Opening our mouth and sharing the love with um, all it really means is, 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 is being a good friend and sharing those important things about us with others and in the right time. And that was the other thing I said, did you know that you, you're never supposed to invite someone unless they are ready? (laughs) Um, So, you know, so that in the right time, in the right scenario, you have the ability to share, you know, thing, and it can be anything you can share your, you can share light online. You can go on social media you can share family stories. You can share general conference talk. You can share some sort of inspiration. All of this is doing missionary work. And, and so taking the, the narrow mind of inviting someone to hear what the missionaries have to say, and that's the only thing you can think of as missionary work, we need to change that. Agree to 100%. You know, I mean, I, you used that. I am so, because so, I was talking to somebody in our high council about this and I, he was doing a slide presentation. He said, missionary work. And I texted him afterwards and I said, I, re, I view it as service. And he went, oh, I wish I knew this before I taught this class because it's just, it's, it's service. It's service to him. And, and that's, and we're not being paid for it. Missionaries actually pay to go on a mission. So I think, that's its service but that's just my own opinion but i do love what you said andrew thank you andrew thank you dennis i have a couple of things to add um one of my favorite part verses from the scriptures that we're discussing in doctrine and covenant 60 to 62 is 62 5 and it's simply and then you may return to bear record And and yes, I'm just taking the first part of that because that right there reminds me of the constant adjunct to give our testimony. We are constantly reminded that an integral part of all of the service that we do is bearing record, giving our testimony of each and every piece of this. But I, I wanted to, again, I, I, this, this, this must be my thing. I, I happened to catch in the Liahona that uh, when you talk about opening your mouths, well, one of the people in, in one of the matriarchs of the saints <laughs> who opened her mouth was Emily Richards. She had something to say. It was 1889 and the topics of women's suffrage in Utah and plural marriage were being fiercely debated. Although Emily was nervous, she felt prepared to speak on behalf of her home, her gender, and her religion. And she went to DC to do just that. So Emily Richards, you go girl. (laughs) And I think that pretty much wraps up our lesson, but let's go ahead and go around and give some love and light for the week ahead. Bradley, why don't you start us off? Um, I think I started last time too. It's okay. Oh well. um, I think, no, that's okay. It's fine. I'm just trying to remember what mine was and what I said last time. Um, I think my love and light, what I've been really uh, focusing on recently, and I think I've said this before as well, it's just like the importance of like family units and having a family, whatever that may look like to you. Um, because to me, that's where a source of my joy is. And I'm grateful that I'm able to spend time with them. And, and I think that is really like the beauty of the gospel is, is all about family. So, Well, I can tell you that 
any time that, that you are filming from your family's house, you, your smile is always yeah. bigger. You always look more <laughs> yeah. relaxed. You yeah. always look like you're having fun and it always makes me feel like, like we're interrupting your fun. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We are, but, we are, but thanks. Thanks, Bradley, for coming anyway. Well, we really do appreciate you taking yeah. the time to do that. You, you, do, you do have a glow. Sure. You do have a glow, and I love the that. The sun is right on my face, so I do have a glow yeah. right now. <laughs> That's God shining his light on you. <laughs> Dennis, how about you? So I, I just want to, first of all, say that Bradley, I just think you're amazing. And I love you as an eternal brother. So I think you're I'm awesome. right there with you. Yeah. And, but this just goes back to, you know, I, I think what we've all been talking about is just don't be afraid to speak your truth and don't be afraid to open your mouth and say, you know, because God is pleased when we share his gospel. And I feel that I have that glow today. I feel I have an extra glow on top of the glow on top of the glow because of I love serving with missionaries and the missionaries felt it. They were so happy. I'm going to be meeting in West in South Jordan, one of the missionaries parents that serves in my area when I'm out there and I just can't wait. So that's my love and light. Just share his glow. Thank you, Dennis. Andrew, how about you? I'm going to take mine directly from the lesson, Doctrine and Covenants 61, verse 36. And I, I, I keep feeling like I want to share this one because I, I feel like someone out there needs to hear it. Maybe it's someone on this call. Maybe it's someone listening. But it says, and now verily I say unto you, and what I say unto you, to one, I say unto all, be of good cheer, little children. For I am in your midst, and I have not forsaken you. Love that. Thank I so much. love that. that. That reminds me of Maggie reading to me before I go to bed at it night. It reminds and you of me because I read that to you like three times. Yes, you <laughs> did. Last you, week. You, and I'm like, holy cows. And then that's what I go to sleep with. So that's just resonating. Maggie Slight. The gospel, Maggie Slight, <laughs> Doctrine and Covenants, Maggie Slight. But see, now I'm going to remember in Andrew's voice, and I like Andrew's voice. He's got that nice, deep voice that I really like. And so we'll both be happy. Mascul masculine. <laughs> Very okay, butch. So for, for my love and light, I, I, want, I want to take a quote from Elder Gong's room at the inn, his, uh, his latest talk because I got something from it that when I was actually looking at quotes to share, I got something from this quote that I hadn't initially gotten. And, you know, the spirit is always teaching us. He invites each of us to be a good Samaritan, less, less judgmental and more forgiving of ourselves and of each other even as we strive more fully to keep his commandments. Mm. So be more forgiving of yourself this week. Thank you for joining us. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified the next time we upload a video. We hope that your week ahead is full of the love and light of Jesus Christ. We love you, and so does God. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.